So it's story time. I'm going to tell you a little story about how I was Karen in the parking lot of a mall. For reference, if you're new here, my name is Lauren, former foster youth. I'm also a, an adoptive mom. I've adopted six kids out of the foster care system and we have 10 kids total. And that's kind of important in the story because this story starts with us being out of town with those 10 kids. We were about two hours away from home and we had spent the entire day running around this big city doing all the fun things with our gigantic horde of children and we were exhausted parents and at this point in the day it was later um, we were looking for a place to have dinner and we were at the time living in a really small town we're a military family we move a lot so we don't still live there but we were in a little tiny town so us getting to be in a big city where we got to choose whatever we wanted to eat was like a big deal my kids were super excited to get to pick something they normally don't get to eat so we're searching high and low we're, we're kind of debating on what it's going to be and my kids had decided that of all the places they wanted to eat wait for it it was going to be panda express because our little town and a lot of towns in between us and this big city had no Panda Express. So they were pretty stoked to get to eat at Panda Express at the time. My kids are kind of big on orange chicken and that kind of thing. So both of us parents, we pull out our GPS maps and we're looking for the Panda Express that would be on the way out of this big city and onto the highway that would get us home because we were so tired at this point. We were just ready to be done. And I need you to know that we were done, like D-O-N-E done at this point of the day. We were still keeping our energy up. We still had our smiles going. We were also hungry and ready for Panda Express, but our people were hangry at this point. Like they were mad, they were hungry, and it was time to feed them right away. So we hurried to this mall that happened to be on the way, happened to have a Panda Express. We thought how perfect we can stop there, kind of sit in their little food court and do our thing. We get inside and my husband waits in line and he gets up to the front and right as he gets up front, they say we're closing down early. We don't have enough staff. My husband looks at them with this very defeated look and they were unwavering. Like they weren't gonna take his order. They weren't going to find something in the back. Like they were done. There was no order to take. They just were done and closing down. So my people were devastated. My husband is super grumpy at this point. I'm super grumpy at this point, but we're just kind of holding it in because we want to keep the hype going for our kids. Maybe we'll find another one on the way, although I'm pretty sure there wasn't one. I don't even remember how this resolved, by the way. Like, I'm not even sure what we did to resolve this issue because all I remember is what happens next. At this point, we're on the downstairs level of the mall where the food court is. The parking is on the upstairs level of the mall. So we work our way back up and there was a broken escalator. So I think we had to go up the stairs. You know, it's just like, it was just like one thing after another of grumpy kids being told, okay, get in the car, get out of the car. Everyone's hungry, everyone's cranky. It's been a long day. They're tired, they don't wanna walk anymore. And you know, it's just like one thing after another. And, and you should know that usually when my husband and I go into public places, what we tend to do is because there are so many kids is he'll kind of walk up front and be the line leader, if you will. Like he's up front navigating us through areas and making sure we're going the right direction because I'm a little directionally challenged myself. And I stay towards the back and I'm more of like a shepherd. So any stragglers, I kind of rein them in. So my eyes are darting around. I'm in business mode, you know? I feel like a farm dog at this point, making sure the livestock's not getting out of hand. And I had kids falling out because once again, they were so upset. And I had kids that were just really squirrely because it had been a long day. So they were kind of going in every direction and I'm, I'm reining them back in. Come on, buddy, let's go here. So we get to the part where we actually have to walk out of the mall and walk through the parking lot. And this is a busy parking lot. Once again, this is a big city. So there are cars going in all directions. And at this point, I am laser focused on making sure a child does not get hit with the car. So usually we'll walk up, everyone will kind of wait when we're bunched up together. We, we have like this whole crossing guard thing we do. We just, we kind of have it down. For everywhere we go, we kind of have this whole thing down to make sure nobody gets hurt or lost or anything like that. Somewhere in this whole process, a child must have wanted to hug me or wrap their arms around me and something else must have gone on that had me on high alert and I didn't notice. We get to the car, I unlock everything, I let everybody in. Okay guys, let's pile up. Dad's gonna try to figure something out. We're gonna get food somewhere else, no big deal. And then I hear pounding on my window. Like my face is right here next to the driver's window and I'm trying to readjust to whining kids that are very upset over what's going on and there's pounding on my window. I look out and there's a lady standing there and she says, excuse me, ma'am. So I roll down the window and I'm thinking like, what is going on? Did I leave something behind? Did I like accidentally, did one of my kids touch a car they weren't supposed to touch? Like what's going on at this point? And she says, I just want you to know that one of your kids tried to hug you and you didn't even hug them back. And that was incredibly rude. I, I, I was completely speechless. I, I, 
I'm like, what, what do you say about that? I, I don't remember a kid trying to hug me. In fact, I think I even asked them and they weren't even sure who tried to hug me. They, you know, and so this woman apparently was somewhere in the parking lot or maybe she was walking in the mall, walking out. I don't know, sitting in her car watching us, I guess, or maybe she even followed us through the mall. I don't know where in this interaction a child had tried to hug me, but someone apparently had tried to hug me at some point and I didn't react to it. And she did not like that. And I still to this day don't know why it was her business or what she was trying to get at. Like, what did she want me to do with that? Like, I'm sorry, like, did she want an apology? She didn't want to go away right away. She really wanted to dig in how disappointed and how rude I am. And and, and she, you know, and I just kept saying, okay, um, yeah, I, oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that, you know, and she eventually walked away in a huff. I didn't really kind of like give in to much of what she was saying, but it was the weirdest thing because at the end of the day, I don't know what she wanted. Like, I don't know what she was hoping to gain from that. I don't, I know she probably didn't understand the story of my family. For all she knows, maybe I'm a daycare person, but I still, I don't know why that would matter. I, I, I still, to this day, do not understand what she thought she was fixing or what she was hoping to do. I, I don't know what the deal was. I don't know why she felt so protective of whichever child this was. But anyway, I started second guessing myself, like maybe I had done something wrong. Had I been a bad mom? Was I being rude or something? I, I really wasn't trying to be. I mean, once again, when you're walking through a place and there are children everywhere and you're just trying to make sure people are making it somewhere safe, that is the goal. The, the primary goal of my children, I have my children all day long. Like I love them all day long. They're with me all day long. We had just had a great day as a family together. So in my mind, their love tanks are full. We're good. I didn't think one little moment where we're trying to charge out should be, I don't know, anything but me trying to get them where they're going and keep them safe. My top priority in those moments is to keep them safe. And so if my kid doesn't get a hug or a kiss or like get to stop me to like tell me a story or, you know, whatever the case may be, that's that's just what it's got to be for that minute look like you can tell me when we get in the car I can hug you when we get somewhere safe um you know we're just trying to go like we're just and, and and that's the thing if I stop for one kid and this has happened before where you know someone oh my shoes untied or whatever if I stop for one kid it kind of messes up our whole system so a lot of times like if I do notice a kid has a need I might scoop them up and try to bring them with me or just kind of like verbally just like hey buddy I see that like we'll, we'll get right on that just let's get where we're going so we'll make sure we're safe um if I notice those kind of things but she had me second guessing myself where I was like did, did this all, like, did I walk through some parallel universe where I just, like, my mind just completely went away and I was being mean? Like, I, I don't know. I, I, I have the capacity to be mean, I'm sure, and be cranky and sassy. And I was cranky and sassy in that moment. But I will tell you that I, I still don't recall a kid trying to hug me. I'm like, I can, I can see it happening. I mean, I've been walking with them lots of places and one will wrap their arm around me and keep walking or, you know, that kind of thing. So I don't know, maybe she wanted me to stop and hug them or acknowledge their hug. I, I still, I still don't know. So that was the only time I was caring where someone was very disgusted by me as a parent because I did not stop to hug one of my 10 children while the other nine were walking through traffic. All that to say, hey, um, maybe don't judge people. If that's you, if you have the tendency to judge people, you don't know the story, um, you see someone out in public and they're struggling, like don't assume that you know what their deal is. Don't assume that you've like got them pegged or that you get what's going on. I mean, people have bad days. So even if like, I was just like, I just don't want to hug right now. You know, that should have been okay too. You know what I mean? Even if that was the case, that should also be okay. You know, you don't know people's stories. So try to give people the benefit of the doubt. Like I'm, I'm all for like, you know, somebody cuts you off in traffic, assume, you don't know, maybe their wife's in labor. You don't know if like th this could be the difference between them getting to work on time or in, or losing their job and their family having like nothing for Christmas. Like you just don't know. Um, so I hope the story doesn't inspire you to be mad at people that are judgy, but just, but just helps us as a whole not to be judgy because um, we all can be, we all can try to make assumptions and we all can try to, um, think that we know what's going on or we know what's best or we know how to parent better than so-and-so knows how to parent. Um, or if I was their mom, I would have done this and this and that. Well, you don't know. Um, especially those of us who have kids um, from hard places that, that come out of trauma. You might see those kids in public. They may not act like a normal, typical child would always act. And you might say, oh man, if I was that mom, I would have whooped his butt or I would have, you know, I, you just don't know. Like you don't know 
the, the, the situation people are in, you, you know, th this lady didn't know if I was their mom, if I was their daycare leader, if I was their aunt, if I was just their babysitter or their nanny, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I like, I don't know where this lady got off. Um, and I, and I was truly like upset and like disturbed by it, driving away. I mean, I really beat myself up. Like I was like, I, how did I not notice? And what, what, what happened there? And maybe I messed up. Was I not paying enough attention? You know, hey, look, if you're the one getting Karen, don't beat yourself up. Stick to your guns and trust your gut. And that's the best advice I've got on that. You're probably doing a great job as a parent. And if you are tempted, anybody out there, to be that Karen or just to be judgy in general, just don't do it. Don't do it. You don't know. You've not lived in that person's shoes. I mean, granted, if you see like true abuse out there on the streets, call the authorities. But until then, people are just trying to do their best. Usually, people are really trying to do their best. So anyway, that's all I have for you, and I will see you next time. All right, bye.